You've heard the term drop the hammer. Today we're dropping Thor's hammer. Hey everybody, welcome back to another week of The Fogo Life. I'm your host, Captain Ron. Today we're doing something special. We're gonna take a, a beef shank that's been Frenched. It's called Thor's Hammer. Can you see why it's called Thor's Hammer? Yeah, exactly. We're gonna smoke it, we're gonna braise it, and we're gonna make some asso buco. So let's go ahead and just get started. A lot of people will take this piece and just smoke it. Well, we're gonna kind of kick it up a couple notches because one of my favorite meals in the world is called asso buco. And what that is, is it's a braised shank. It's braised in liquids, broth, wine, veggies. It's gonna be so good. So we're gonna take it, we're gonna do it on the big green egg. We're gonna smoke it first instead of searing it. Normally you take this, drop it in a hot pot and sear all sides. No, 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 not us. We're Fogo Charcoal. We're going to smoke it and then we're gonna braise it. Mm-hmm. Okay, our first step of our process is going to be to season our meat. Now we're gonna do something pretty cool here. Hey, I'm gonna use my little prep tub I got here so I don't make a mess all over my board and all over my area here. All right, we're gonna take this and what we're gonna do is we're gonna coat it and put some Wagyu tallow on there as a binder. So I want something to make the seasoning stick to it really, really well. So I'm just gonna take some of this and smear it all over there. This is just rendered down Wagyu fat. Asabuco is a really traditionally Italian uh, meal. So I wanna give it some kind of different seasoning. I don't wanna just put a regular barbecue rub on here. So I'm gonna use Tina Karen's European blend here. It's got all kinds of different herbs and spices. I use it in tomato sauce. I use it for everything. She actually, we actually made a video making beef ribs with it that helped her to win the Netflix competition. So this rub is really gonna be perfect for this beef shank. So we're gonna just give it a real nice liberal coating. Okay, now on asobuco, we always wanna use a beef shank or a veal shank that is using the uh, marrow inside. So we're even gonna give that a little bit of flavoring too, because we want total flavor through this whole thing. Yeah, yeah, I know, I haven't lit the grill yet. The reason is I put this seasonings on here while I'm doing lighting the grill and getting that ready for smoking at 250 degrees, I'm gonna let this sit and let all those seasonings penetrate on here, let that binder go to work and let all these seasonings penetrate this big, thick, juicy chop of a beef shank. Yeah, I can't wait. Now let's get the grill lit, shall we? Let's talk for a moment about the blaze of ball. Now you guys see me use this every week and I always get questions about it. So I'm gonna explain a couple things to you about it, all right? All it is, it's a small little cage that we put our, our starters in, okay? You simply put it in here like this and you close it up. Now, everybody always asks me, do you get one use? What do you get out of it? No, I've, I've been using this one for over a year. They work multiple times, but the beautiful part is the starters go in, you light it, and then you can pour charcoal on top of it to really get that charcoal going. Air comes into these Kamados from the bottom, so you're feeding the, the fire right away. It's just a better way of doing it. The charcoal we're using today is gonna be our super premium. The reason why, you get stuff like this in these bags, okay? It's huge, huge, huge pieces. So it's great for low and slow and for smoking. So yellow bag, low and slow. The other thing I'm gonna add is some smoking wood. Now I don't wanna kill this with smoke. I just want a little hint of smoke. Ah, bourbon smoke that is. So I'm gonna use a couple of these bourbon barrel blocks. I'm gonna use two of them. I don't wanna over, over inundate this thing with smoke. Since we are going low and slow, we're gonna put our expander system in here with the convector or diverter, whatever you wanna call it followed by our grates. I have two half moons here. You can use a full grate, whichever you so choose is perfectly fine for this. The only thing left to do to get our meat ready is to stick it in a pot. So in a traditional asabuco, as I said, what they normally do is put this in a hot pot and then sear it. Instead of doing that, we're gonna go ahead and smoke it. So we're just gonna put it in our big Dutch oven here. The beauty of this is while the meat is smoking, we can prepare all our vegetables. And there are a bunch of vegetables in here, but it's a super simple thing. Get yourself a peeler, get yourself some carrots, and get started. Oh, no, 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 that's my glove, Never mind. Too much orange. <laughs> now I'm just gonna chop the carrot into rounds. Where it gets thicker up here, I'll probably chop it in half this way. This way we're not having such giant pieces in here, but just into rounds like that. You can rough chop them thin, doesn't matter. All right, so I, normally I would only use two big celeries in here, but I got some small celery, so I'm just gonna stack them on top of each other and chop them up like that. And for the onions, the only thing we're gonna do for the onions, we're gonna cut the ends off as such and give them a quick peel. Now I know you see us use a lot of products on here, but I wanna tell you something. This easy prep tub, this thing is freaking awesome. And sincerely, try it out, you'll like this thing. It pops up and down, it's a cutting board. Use it for trash, use it for seasoning, you can use it for everything. I gotta go empty it of all this garbage right now, so to the garbage! Uh, as I said before, you won't believe the conversation. Like, well, how old am I? How old do you think I am? Let me know down below. I just had a really weird one. All right, in any case, back to work here. We're on to our next step. So this has been smoking for three hours now. Look at that, baby. You, baby. 
So we're gonna pull it off of here right now, just for a couple minutes though, for our next step. All right, I'm gonna show you a really important step to this. Important, pay attention, okay? Take these skewers, we have these skewers here. Now, inside of here is all this tasty bone marrow. It's really nice and loosened up already. So, but what we wanna do is put all this good marrow to good use. So, we wanna get it all out of here. See the little solids that came out too? That's gonna melt down and render even further. This, you can't, you can't replace the flavor that this provides right here. So, make sure you clean it out real good, scoop it around real good, get everything out of there that you can and use that. Now, before I put the veggies in, I'm gonna to wanna to add about two tablespoons of tomato paste in there. A little bit of extra flavor for us. Voila. Onions are going in. The carrots and the celery, and spread it all around. Spread the love here. Down into the pot, not on top of the meat. And it normally calls for about five cloves. I'm using one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I'm going ten. A couple of them are small. That's okay, though. So we mix it all around, get that tomato paste spread around, get that nice marrow spread around, all right? And now, we just lay it down in here. Now we're gonna hit our veggies with a little more of this tina can of rub here, okay? And that's everything. Now for our liquids. So we're gonna use broth, and we're going to use wine, dry wine. I use a Chardonnay. I find it gives a nice body, really gives a good flavor. So, now what we're gonna do is we're gonna put a top on our pot. So we wanna make sure it's gonna fit. It won't quite close like this. If you have to, just rotate it around a little bit. Plus, you really want the meat down in there. You wanna get it about three quarters covered. So that's a pretty good sit fit that we have here. I bumped the temperature of the egg up to 350 degrees. I did not show you that, but it is bumped up to 350. So we're ready to put this right back on for the last part of braising. Hey, good news. Our asabuco is almost done braising. So we're gonna make some beautiful pasta. I got popper del. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna boil this up. I'm gonna get some pasta water going. I'm just gonna let them cook away a little bit until it's ready. We're gonna call it al dente, which means just before being done. I don't know the exact trend. Uh, meaning, but that's what it means. That's what it comes to. The pasta, just before being mushy like that, it's got a little bite to it still, al dente. Oh boy, we're getting closer. All right, our pasta is done cooking, so we're gonna shut this off. You can see we used our beautiful Ramertoff pot here. So we're gonna strain this out. Okay, get all the water out. Ta-da! Like I said, you can serve this over mashed potatoes, you can serve it over polenta, you can serve it over anything you want. It's really delicious. Egg noodles are great. I like it over this big fat pappardel pasta. I just think it really, really works well for it. So just get as much of the moisture out of there as you can. And into the bowl it goes. Time to take this giant Dutch oven off of the grill. Let's see what we got here. Oh. Ooh, that smell. Now be careful because remember there's a lot of liquids in there. A lot of liquids. Okay, look at that. Now for this next step, it's gonna be really hot. We wanna shred the beef. So I'm gonna make my gloves a little bit heat proof here and put on these cotton gloves that we sell underneath, underneath my rubber gloves. I mean, it just falls apart. Absolutely beautiful. It's got a gorgeous smoke ring on it. Now you're gonna find you're gonna get this gelatinous piece of fat. Pull that out of there. I know I don't wanna bite into that, do you? Now you can do a couple of things with this, with this veggies and the broth here, it's all cooked, okay? But if you wanna intensify the flavor a little more, put it back on, boil it down for a while. You can add some flour to it and thicken it, whatever you wanna do. I like it just like this. I want these natural flavors just to shine through. So I'm gonna grab a nice scoop full of everything here. Look at all of that goodness, oh my God. And just dump it right over. Beef shank asabuco. Let me tell you something. That is absolutely beautiful. I would probably thicken the gravy a little more next time. I like it to be a little bit thicker. We made a lot, a lot of juices. So, but look at that bite. I got onion. I got carrots. I got pasta. I got meat. I got everything. I got hunger. Mm. I'm telling you what, that is absolutely delicious. The asabuco. Let me tell you something, if you've, if you've ever had it in a restaurant or something like that, this is gonna taste a little bit different because of the smoking first. We didn't sear it, we smoked it. And I love it, I love it. You know, I mean, listen, this is why I do what we do here. We love barbecue, and we love grilled food. Just that hint of smokiness. You don't wanna overly smoke it. Just that kiss is just, I mean, it is just outstanding. The meat is so tender. The pot, I don't know, I, I love everything about this meal. This, this, is, this has Captain Ron written all over it right here. I love it, the onions, 
I could eat about 100 of them. And you know, just because what you saw me put in here, you can put more of anything, put less of anything, adjust it to your taste. You know what else? Go off the reservation. Put something in that you might want to think is different. I bet some bay leaves would be great in there, thyme, anything you want to add in there would be absolutely fantastic. Folks, as I always say, if you saw any of the products that we used in this video and you're interested in learning more about them and think you may want them, there's a link in the description down below, okay? Check it out, everything's available. Um, this is a meal that is like a super comfort food. I would highly recommend it. I can picture like when I lived up north getting done shoveling the driveway or something and walking in and eating this. Man, oh man, just, I mean, absolutely outstanding. And um, to all you Italians out there who are gonna say, it's not real Osabuco. Well, it's pretty darn close and it is freaking delicioso, all right? Forget about it. So anyway, that's all I've got for this time. I hope that you enjoyed this as much as I'm gonna enjoy digging into this whole big bowl. No bones about it. <laughs> anyway, remember one thing, get out and grill. And I'll see you the next time on The Fogo Life.